Okay, so it turns out this calibration is uh, much easier than you might think. And uh, we're just going to go through very quickly uh, the uh, mathematics and uh, what you need to do within here. So the first thing we need to do is make sure uh, 100 millimetres of the filament is fed through when we tell the machine to feed 100 millimetres through. In my, my case it was miles out, so hence the problem. So you would feed in your filament. Uh, I had some free white filament supplied with the machine so I used that, that was easier to mark. So we would first go to prepare down to the preheat PLA and uh, just get that bed, uh, sorry, uh, hot end working. So that is now heating the uh, hot end as you can see and I'm um, going to stop that because we don't need that uh, to be uh, done just put it on to cool down and that will stop heating so anyway you would heat up the hot end you would feed your white filament through and uh, allow some of it to come out and uh, then you just need to mark a hundred millimeters from where it goes in oh, which we can't actually see yeah so you would measure from the hole there back a hundred million hundred millimeters and you would mark the, um, the filaments accordingly now what we do then, when that's heated up and you've fed it through and you've just wiped off any residue from the hot end, we go into uh, prepare, move axis, and we would go down to extruder, and you go down to the one millimeter one, and you would slowly turn this up until it says 100. At this point this would be extruding. It's not now because there's no filament and it's not at heat. So just slowly turn that up to 100. Do not go above. Just slow down and that's it. And that will now feed 100 millimeters of filament and in my case it was feeding I think it was about 64 millimetres, so it was miles short of what it should have been. And uh, obviously I ended up with the mark that was still sticking way out of the machine. Uh, and at that point, let's go back to the main screen. So anyway, the what you do then is uh, you go into the steps per millimeter and that is under motion here so you go down to steps per millimeter and you go down to the E steps and you can see at the moment I've got it on 14625 you know, originally it came with the machine settings which was 93 uh, so no good for me but you get that figure yeah, so 93 we've got written down there um, so the equation really is steps per millimeter which is 93 that's set in the machine you times that by 100 you get uh, 9300 uh, you then uh, god yes so you <laughs> you get that figure which uh, is 9300 uh, then you divide it by uh, the extruded filament length which in my case was 64 millimeters or thereabouts and you come out with a figure of uh, 146 and uh, that you would need to enter in the steps section so you would just go into that if you uh, miscalculate any of this and you seem to have a big number to enter uh, it's probably clearly wrong and the, the other way of knowing is uh, it's despite spinning the knob really quickly 
that these figures do not change very much. Now that would suggest to the end user that um, you know the original 93, you're not going to be far off. It's not going to be up in three, four hundred range because it just won't change that quickly. Okay, so you would then enter. See how slowly that changes. So we want one four six. We'll get out of that, back up to the menu. Uh, and we've got to store the settings. If you don't store this now, the next time you power off and on, uh, you will have lost the, those settings. So we can store that. Uh, you can test again now, and in my case, it now feeds through uh, perfectly correctly. So, yeah, really straightforward. Um, something else that matters is the flow rate uh, of the filament and uh, again fairly simple calculations um, just going to show you these so these are calibration cubes uh, that I've printed off uh, the uh, hang on a sec I'm going to have to swap hands here let's go back and I'll show you the print settings okay uh, so these were all on 100 to start with the flow rate for everything was on 100 okay and that's what we need to adjust so you would print a cube as you can see on there at the full flow and uh, what you will do then is measure the thickness of the walls uh, now in my case they were uh, we wanted 0.8 and I had 0 0.92, 0 0.93, 0 0.93 and 0.89. If you add those up and divide by 4 you get 0.9175 so I just rounded it up to 0 0.92 um, and then you divide the 0 0.8 by the 0 0.92 and that gives you a figure of 87 now if we just do that here so the wall thickness we wanted it was 0.8 we divide it by what we averaged which was uh, 0.92 and that gives you the percentage uh, of 86 86.9 so it's 87 so we enter 87 there um, and then you do another uh, print uh, and that should be 0.8 thickness on all of the walls or thereabouts you know, tiny variations I did this three times actually it was I was miles out and then uh, tweaked it a little bit and just messing around and just tweaked it just a fraction again but if you do the maths right you should be able to do this in one go just going to put the camera down on the support here so I think this was the last one. If we just get the caliper, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not. So I don't think that's the the last one. That's 0.91. Sick. Let's try it. the other one. So I wanted to find the one that was uh, good. That's 0 0.82, 0 0.81, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, yeah, 82. I think that was probably the final version. These are 0 0.84, 81, 82, and this one, yeah, 0 0.9. Point nine, eight, point eight seven. So yeah, you do that until you've got the correct wall thickness, and that then is a job done. Your printer is calibrated. Now I had been using uh, Creality, uh, the Creality slicer, but uh, I couldn't find 
one of these settings. I can't remember which one it was, but I just couldn't find it in the Creality uh, slicer settings. So I just downloaded uh, this Ultimaker Cura slicer, and it seems a hell of a lot better. Um, the other thing I like about this is I plugged it into the USB, and uh, you can do a preview, and you can obviously step through the various slices like so. Uh, and then you can just you can either save it to a removable drive, or if you bring that down, you can print via USB and then print and uh, it will go off and it will give you the temperatures as they change and it gets working um, all sorts of other things and a percentage here will build up as it's uh, working so I think I'm going to stick with this uh, Ultimaker Cura and uh, we're now going to be doing a proper print uh, something else that I found interesting uh, I've got the bed leveling uh, program that I run on this it just moves the head to various points a couple of times and you just adjust the knobs to get it perfectly level uh, one of these I printed out some days ago the other one I've just done and you can actually measure the difference I think it was the thickness that was different rather than the height but uh, there was a measurable difference in the print of these test squares that uh, it just does various sizes of square just so you can double check that it's all level but uh, yeah as I say a measurable difference so we've now got the uh, feed rate correct and we've also got the flow rate correct so I think the next thing we're going to do is try a proper print, I'll probably pr uh, print the power supply stand again actually, I uh, don't know whether this is going to focus, yeah, you can see how good that looks now, that's the bottom, it will focus, pretty, uh, pretty good, so yeah, all the settings were miles out, and that hopefully will solve all of the problems they all printed perfectly so yeah simple equations uh, but once it's done that, uh, that should be it so uh, yeah 